Hey guys, it's Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop and Amanda Herring is in the Fat Quarter Shop studio showing us how to make the warm applique block from her friendship quilt along. She's gonna be showing two methods of applique right now. She's gonna show us the freezer paper method and the Pellon method. So let's get started. Let's talk about the supplies you're gonna to need to make the warm block. The first thing you're gonna need is a set of friendship quilt templates. And from those templates, we're going to be using Warm 3, Warm 4, Gracious 1, Warm 1, and Gracious 2. And so you're going to want to grab all of those out of your cute little bag of templates. Then you're going to be needing some freezer paper. And today we're using Kim Deal's Best Applique Freezer Paper. You're going to want some type of Pellon interfacing. I prefer a fusible interfacing, but maybe you prefer a sewing interfacing. Either one of those will work great. You're going to want some kind of turning tool. Uh, you're going to want either a glue based or some applique pins. You're going to want some needles. I prefer to use a really flexible fine needle for this and some thread. And we're going to use a little bit of a paintbrush and some starch. So let's get started. The first method I'm going to show you is the freezer paper method. And this is a great way to do hand applique, especially if you're like me and your needle turn applique looks like a three-year-old did it. This is a little bit of a shortcut to make sure your edges look nice. So the first thing we're going to do is trace our template onto our freezer paper. And I'm starting with the warm template, warm one, and this is the petals of our flower. So I'm just going to trace these on and I'm tracing it on the not shiny side. For every petal that I'm going to make, I'm going to make two freezer paper pieces. So for this particular piece, there are eight petals. I'm going to want 16 pieces of freezer paper. So now that I've traced, we're just gonna do one petal right now. I've traced those two and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. All right, so here are my two pieces that are already cut. To start with, I'm gonna take these two pieces and I'm gonna put them on my ironing board and I'm just going to do a little tack to make sure my pieces are stuck together. And the reason why I like to use two pieces is so that it gives me a little bit of extra strength when I'm folding my paper over the edges. Now I'm going to lay this on my fabric and I'm going to press it in place. When you're working with the freezer paper, it's not uncommon for it to come loose. And it's okay if that happens. Don't worry about it. You can just re-adhere re it on using your iron. I like to reuse my pieces lots of times and will oftentimes save my pieces in case I want to make a quilt a second time. So if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to cut 16. You could just cut two and reuse it over and over to get all eight of your petals. So I'm leaving myself a very generous half inch, maybe a little bit more. I'm just gonna cut a little teeny bit off the tip there because I want, um, I like to have a little bit extra to work with. And I'm gonna bring my stiletto out. If you don't have a stiletto, that's just fine. You can use a seam ripper or you can use your finger if you're really, really careful. And then I, I like to work with an almost empty bottle of starch. You could always pour it into the cap or into a bowl, but I like this because I, it's the easiest for me. Now when I paint on my starch, I am going to be really careful not to get too close to my paper because I don't like my starch to seep under the edge. Sometimes starch will leave a little bit of a mark on your fabric. That of course will wash out when you wash your quilt, but if I can avoid putting it on there in the first place, I like to. So I'm going to get in here, but I'm not going to get too, too close to my edge. Then I'm going to take my iron and I'm gonna press it over the edge of my freezer paper. And I like to start with this little neck piece because it's a little bit curved and pull it in. And um, now this is where it gets tricky. If you're gonna use your fingers or your stiletto, be careful not to burn yourself. So you can bring your stiletto in 
sometimes I feel like working with a stiletto is like working with a mannequin arm. So it feels a little bit awkward for me. So I have very tough fingers. I don't worry too much about it. But I've pulled in my edge there. So if I turn this to the front, you can see I have one nice finished edge. And that was really easy to do with this double layer of paper. If I had a single layer of paper, it's a lot harder to get that nice crisp edge. So now I'm gonna repeat on the other side. At the top here, I'm going to make sure I fold that whole top over. It's gonna leave me with a dog ear, but when I hand stitch this down, I'm just gonna tuck that in with my needle. And again, I'm going to start up here at the top. So I'm going to make sure I fold over that tip first and get that curve in the little no, I'm kind of calling that the neck of the, the petal, but the tip of the petal or whatever you want to call that. I know it's a little difficult to see my fingers here. The one thing I want to avoid when I'm doing this is making any points on my fabric. For example, here's one right here. So you can see this little point in my fabric. And if you get it, it's okay. Um, you just need to make sure you get it out. So I'm going to use my stiletto and rework that point because you can fix it with your needle when you hand stitch it on, but I really like it to be all ready to go and look nice and clean before I even start to attach it onto my piece. While it's still hot, I'm just kind of finger pressing that, making sure I get that to where I really like the way it looks. So there's my first petal. Um, I've left some bit on the bottom here. I'm going to just take my scissors and trim that off. Now, before I pop my paper out, I want to make sure that this piece is completely cool to the touch, that it has no warmth in it. Um, I like it to really hold its shape, and if you wait till it's really cool, that's going to just do a little bit of extra insurance. Then I'm just going to pop it out. And there is your shape. If it's not holding its shape, you can re-iron it and make sure it does, but I usually find that it's perfect just the way it is when I pull it out. Now I'm going to repeat the same process until I have eight flower petals. So here are my others. These need the bottoms trimmed on them. You really don't have to trim these, it's just extra fabric that ends up being under your center, and I don't like that extra bulk, so I like to trim it away. The next thing we're going to do is um, look at how to make our circles. We're going to use the same method with the freezer paper that we used um, before. We're going to take our freezer paper, we're going to take our template, and we're going to draw it on. And I'm going to want two, again, okay, so here's our two pieces. And we're going to take our piece of fabric and we're going to fuse this in place like this. Okay. Now we're going to cut around our piece here and I'm going to take you to the sewing machine to show you the next step. Okay, now we're at our machine and I'm going to use, I'm going to lengthen my stitch all the way out to use a gathering stitch or a basting stitch. And I am also going to point out that in this particular example, we have one color in our top thread and one color in our, bo in our bobbin. And I actually really like that for gathering purposes because sometimes I confuse my two threads. So it's a really great way to keep it straight. Um, about a quarter of an inch, generous quarter of an inch away from my circle, I'm just going to run, I'm going to run uh, my basting stitch. Now, if you'll remember, I said sometimes your paper doesn't like to stay stuck, and that's okay if it comes unstuck in this particular situation. You can just take it back to the iron and re-adhere that again, so don't worry. And you can see it's already gathering for me there, which is great. I'm not worrying too much about this being perfect. I'm just wanting this gathering stitch. Now, if you prefer to do this step by hand, that works too whatever way you like to run a gathering stitch is great. 
I'm not worrying too much about perfection here. None of this is going to show in my finished product. And then at the end, I'm just going to make sure that I overlap my stitches by a few so that I get it gathered all the way around. Um, I'm going to pull out my thread a little bit before I cut it so that I have a nice long tail. You can see that it's already gathering here. I'm just going to continue to gather that. So let's take this to the ironing board where I'll show you how to finish it up. So this is what my circle looked like right as it came off the sewing machine. Yours might not have gathered so much and that's okay. What we're going to want to do is find two threads either on the bottom or the top. Make sure that they're both on the same side and continue gathering it until it's nice and tight around the circle. This is where I always break my thread and it's a giant pain so be careful not to break your thread but you want to get this nice and tight. Once you have it tight, hold on to those threads and then we're going to bring in our iron and we're going to make sure we're working from the outside in to the center of the circle. And I'm being sure to keep my threads taut here so that I don't lose tension as I'm ironing. If you want to be super secure, you can put some starch on here too. Um, I don't really usually need it. It works out pretty good and I'm just going to hit it from the front too and make sure I've got a nice crease around that outside edge. And then just like before, we're going to want to make sure that's nice and cool before we pop the papers out. While we're waiting for that to cool, I'm just going to show you I've already completed this step on all three of the circles that we're use, going to use on this block. The white circle, the blue medallion, and then on this teeny tiny little circle. And the trick with this little circle is the same thing that I just showed you with your tension. Because when, when you have to reach in there to pop out that um, piece of paper, <laughs> couldn't remember what that word was, it's going to loosen up your circle. So once you've pulled it out, you can use your strings to re-tighten that back down and get a nice cute little dot. This is also a great place if you're feeling intimidated by this tiny little piece that you can pop in a piece of wool. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now that my piece is cool, I'm safe to come in here and pop out my piece of paper. I'm going to want to disturb the outside as little as possible. So I'm just slowly pulling this out. I want to keep that edge intact as much as possible as I remove this piece of wax paper. And there we go. And I can just touch that up if I feel like it needs a little bit of extra touch up. And there is a nice, perfect circle all ready to go. I'm going to leave my strings and I'm not going to cut them until just before I'm ready to iron it on, just in case I need to go back and pull that string one more time. The next step is we're going to make this cute little flower and this is using the Gracious One template. And I like to use this Pellon applique method because of all these round bumps with tight corners. It's a little bit tricky to do it a lot of other ways. So I like to use this one to get those curves nice and straight or nice and curvy as the case may be. So what we're going to do, I like to use a fusible pellon, but you can also use a non-fusible or sew-in pellon if you prefer. I'm going to put my um, pellon and my fabric together. I'm going to put my template you could always put your pellon on right after this step, but um, the next thing you're going to do is using a water soluble pen or um, I like to use water soluble on white. If you're working with a darker fabric, you have a lot more flexibility. You could use a pencil and I'm just carefully tracing around my template here. And then I can pull that off. Now, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, but I'm going to want to make sure, first of all, that I'm sewing with my dot side facing the right side of my fabric. So we're putting um, the fusible side together with the right side. And that means that when we turn this right side out, our fusible side will be on the outside and the right side of our fabric will be on the outside. So take this to your sewing machine and stitch around it. You can see I've already completed that step right here and I've just gone over my stitching at the end to make sure that it's 
backstitched and it's not going to come undone and I've been very careful when I hit each of these points to make sure that I only hit the points once and I don't have a double stitch there. The next thing that we're going to do once it's sewn, you can see I've already started, is cut out. When you're working with curves like this, I find that for me at least it works better if I have a smaller seam allowance. It creates less bulk on the inside of, or on the outside of my curves and it makes it a little bit easier when I go into these points. So I'm just cutting this and I'm going to leave enough so that I, it doesn't, my sewing doesn't pull out when I turn it, but small enough that I'm not going to see a ton of that bulk in the seam when it's all done. I like these processes that take a little bit of time that take a little bit of detail. These are my favorite ones to sit down, do them all in a set, and then sit with a good movie and prepare all my pieces so that I'm ready to sew. The next thing I need to do is clip into every single one of these points to make sure that they turn nicely. So you're gonna clip to, but not through, your seam. All right. I've clipped all of my corners, I've trimmed it all down. I'm going to turn it to the back side and I'm going to cut myself a little hole. When you're doing this, be super careful not to cut through your fabric too because that would be really sad to have to redo that whole step all over again. You could cut yourself an X or you can just cut yourself a slit, whatever you find preferable. I like an X because it helps me to get into all of these little pieces that we're going to have to get into. Okay, now we're going to start the turning process. Um, I like to go through, kind of start my whole process, turn everything so it's kind of started to be turned. And then using some kind of turning tool, um, I'm using a purple thing which I really love. You're going to come through and very carefully pop these out. Make sure that you stay between the fabric piece um, and not stick your tool through the pellon. So I'm staying between the fabric in that crease where the fabric is on both sides of my turning tool. I don't want to be out here but inside the seam. Once we get this all the way turned, then we're going to do some finger pressing just to make sure that we have nice rounded curves. Because we've used, because I have used, you might not like to use the fusible, but because I have used the fusible, I wait to do any ironing until I'm ready to stick my pieces together. So I like to do this whole part by hand. You can see, looking at it, that it looks pretty good, but there are some places where I might have some points um, that I don't like so much. So I like to just take these little pieces and roll them in my fingers till I make them nice and smooth. So take your time on this process because the way this piece looks going into your hand sewing makes a big difference in how it looks coming out of your hand sewing. If you're a pro with a needle, turning all of those little bits and raking them under with your needle, maybe you don't need to worry about it so much, but I like to be super careful about this to make sure that I'm really set up to make that look nice in the end. So now we've got all of our pieces ready and we're going to start laying out our block so we can start hand sewing. Okay, let's put our warm block together. This block is put together in steps. The first step is we're gonna put on our petals. Just like we did before on our other blocks, we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a registration point. So I like to do this by with my finger pressing, but if you prefer to do it with an iron, that's just fine. I'm gonna give myself four folds on this piece. Down the middle one way, down the middle the other way, and then two diagonals. I'd also like to point out I cut this piece a little bit larger than it needs to be when it's finished because when you're hand sewing your edges get really rough and you can see just from the handling of this it's already starting to fray a little bit 
and you want to have enough extra at the end to trim some of that off. So my block is a half inch larger than it will need to be in the end. You'll also find that it will shrink up a little from hand sewing, so it's a really good insurance to make sure that that's a little bit bigger. Okay, so I've given myself lots of registration marks. I can see my center point and I can see where every petal is going to fall. I know that I want to leave myself a little bit of extra on the outside, so I'm going to just start laying this out and I'm going to lay everything out to have a good idea of where it's all going to end up finished. Doing all of this before I pin or glue anything down to make sure I've got it looking just how I want it to look. Next I'm going to lay on my other pieces and just make sure I like how it's all spaced. And then I'm going to make any slight adjustments that I need to make from there. Make sure that I've got about the same, roughly the same amount top and bottom. Remembering that I am going to trim this at the end. And then when I know I kind of like the way this is laid out, I'm going to remove these pieces and I'm going to glue base each of these down. Now if you would rather pin, there's lots of pinning options. For example, there's sweet little applique pins that are these tiny little baby pins that you can pin in or um, you can use um, a silk head pin or a silk head pin, a glass head pin. Um, but we're going to use a glue based method for me right now and I'm just going to use sparingly little little dots of glue. You don't need very much. The one place I always avoid putting my glue is on the very tip because we're going to need to turn that little dog ear underneath we don't want glue interfering, so I avoid putting any glue in this top section. The next thing we're going to do is work on hand sewing some of these petals down. I'm using my favorite thread which is Aurifil thread and we'll have a delightful thread collection available through Fat Quarter Shop as well that matches your fabrics perfectly. I have threaded a needle and I like a thin flexible needle to do this with and we've put a knot in the end. Um, I am not the perfect at this and so I say that not because I'm making excuses but because I want you to know that you can try and do anything you want to do. Don't be afraid of trying any of these techniques that we're showing you because you might learn and try something you really love to do. So to start with I'm coming in through the back of my fabric and through the edge of my petal and I'm coming in just underneath the edge of my fold. Okay, so we've brought it up through our, our petal and now I'm going to go in underneath, just barely underneath the petal and in the same stitch I'm going to come back through my petal again. All that matters is that I'm catching a few threads on this and hiding my thread as much as possible. So again, I'm going to go in underneath the petal, just barely, I don't want to come in way underneath, just barely underneath the petal and through the petal at the same time. I don't like to pull my stitches too tight because it makes little indentations, but you want to make sure that it's nice and secure. You can say, see that I'm not taking tiny little stitches, but you also want to make sure your stitches aren't too 
big. One little tip too, if you find that as you're pulling your thread through, it's knotting itself, you can start by pulling your thread over, holding it with your thumb, come in underneath, and then hold that in place until it's ready to pull through. And that will keep your thread from knotting itself as you pull it in. This is not a really fast process, but it's a really lovely process. So don't be concerned about hurrying, right, and finishing your project, but in taking time to really enjoy the process of stitching this. So here we are at the point. Um, this is my way of doing the point. I like to bring my needle through right at the tippy top there. Um, and then I'm going to turn my whole thing around and we're going to take care of this little dog ear. Sometimes these are a little bit big, but I don't, you can trim them, but be really careful when you trim them because then if you trim them too short, you're dealing with little threads poking out. But we do have to fit a lot of bulk into this point and we're going to do this by raking with our needle and basically stuffing this fabric underneath. And if you get it stuffed in here and you feel like, Oh my goodness, that is so much fabric in there, then maybe you do want to pull some out and trim down your dog ear just a little bit. I'm pretty happy with the way that that one went under, so I'm just gonna continue. I'm gonna drop my needle back down right at that point, and then I'm gonna take the tiniest little stitch, just to make sure I get that dog ear securely sewn into that little hole. I took a little bit much of my petal there, but that'll give you the idea. So now I've got my dog ear trapped in there and it's not going to come out. And then I'm just going to continue this down the rest of the side. Once you've sewn down all of your petals, then you can add your circles on. And um, you're going to do the same thing, do them one at a time, adding each layer and hand stitching each layer in place. If you prefer not to hand stitch, you can use the applique stitch on your sewing machine. And that looks like three straight stitches and one zigzag by doing stitch, 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 and then a little zigzag in. And that will give the basic look of what we've just done with hand sewing. So once you've added all of your layers on, one at a time, hand stitch them in place, this is what your finished block will look like. And isn't it lovely? So warm and friendly. And I think you will find this is a really fun addition to your quilt. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to make the warm block for the Friendship Quilt Along. I hope you'll check out the other videos on the Friendship Quilt Along on Fat Quarter Shop. Thanks so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.